question. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Decided to do something a little bit different today. And decided just to sit down and get a little personal. Uh, this is gonna be a longer video, but I decided to do like a quick Q and A. Um, so over on my Instagram, I put up a post asking everyone just to ask me questions. And I got a ton back, and all the questions kind of range from photography, filmmaking, a little bit about myself, a little bit about gear. The spectrum is kind of all over the place. I just thought we'll sit down and go through all these questions, answer them, and uh, I would love for you guys to put some insight, maybe answer them yourself. Uh, if you guys have some insight down in the comments below, make it more of a interactive uh, type of video so let's sit back enjoy make sure you guys have a coffee water pre-workout whatever the case is i don't know why i said pre-workout but grab something to chill on snack on eat on and uh yeah let's jump right into this by the way i will be looking off of my phone a lot because obviously all the questions are here so question number one how did you get your start in film and photography so not to sound cliche but i kind of already knew that this was going to be the trajectory of my life when I was a kid. So when I was about 12 or 13 years old, the church I was going to back in my hometown, which is Buffalo, New York, uh, they started going live on television. And I think actually I was about 11 years old and I wasn't technically old enough to operate the cameras. So I got introduced to just cable management, uh, putting away gear, things of that nature. Then when I was around 12 or 13, that's when I was old enough to start operating cameras. And from that point, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. Fast forward to college, I actually went to film school, Full Sail University, uh, did their film program, graduated, moved to California in 2012. In 2012, I did everything underneath the sun, all the way from PA to interning at some of the biggest music video production companies. Uh, interning at editing houses, the whole the whole nine. I've done every position that you can kind of think of. And then I got to a certain point where I just wanted to fend for myself and do my own thing and, and take on entrepreneurship and take on freelancing full time. So I think that was around 2014, 2015. I truly just dove in and started doing my own thing. And 2024 here we are still going at it strong so that's how i got my start next question so what are some do's and don'ts slash advice for someone who wants to get into photography i'll say the biggest don't i'll say and it's kind of a do at the same time but is don't really social media is an interesting thing the internet is is a crazy place these days where you can kind of fall for all the trends and do things just because they look cool on social media. So I would say if you're gonna even become a photographer and you want this to be your profession and you wanna make a living from it, don't necessarily get sucked into the trends, but do what organically feels right for you. I think I even fell into that trap, not necessarily in the beginning of my career, but um, in the beginning of like the social media era. So in 2015, 2014 era uh i don't know how old some of you guys are but back then instagram was an interesting place where photographers worked with influencers solely just to have content on their instagram it was a lot of like half naked type of it was like a different style of photography like a lot of beach wear things of that nature and i kind of leaned into that because it helped me get followers now that necessarily wasn't my professional taste or like my my style of photography it was just something i did just to get i hate to say it but to get clout and to get popularity so even if you look at my following now i have a i have almost 60,000 followers on instagram and a lot of it came from my photography back in the day so i would say stay true to you that is step number one and don't fall for the trends i would say that's the other big thing do it for yourself do it for the love of what you actually wanna put out in the world. What are the biggest challenges facing photographers and filmmakers today? Again, I think the biggest challenge is, is social media. I feel like people are so consumed by social media um, 
that one, they just consume, 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 and they never ever create anything. But then also social media gives this false narrative and this false look and approach at what we do as creatives and as business owners and entrepreneurs. I, I like to differentiate content creators and professional photographer and professional filmmaker, um, even though social media likes to clump them all together. And I feel like they're honestly different tiers entirely. Some jobs I will approach as a content creator and then some jobs I will approach as a professional photographer or professional director, filmmaker, editor, etc. I think social media is the biggest thing. Then also just technology is also advancing. Like we have AI and a lot of people are using AI. Obviously AI is great and if you use it correctly, it's, it's a great tool, but I don't think it should be a crutch. I think it should just be used in those certain areas where it'll help enhance a project, but it shouldn't be relied on 100%. So those are the areas where I feel like things are challenging uh, for filmmakers and photographers today. How do you stay inspired and creative? So I find a lot of my inspiration through music. I absolutely love music. Music was my first love. Before I ever picked up a camera, I played, I think about five or six different instruments. So music is like a really, really big pull for me. And then the other inspiration is traveling and just seeing different places, seeing different things um, that I normally wouldn't see in my day to day. So when I go to different countries, most of the time, obviously, like I'll go see the, the highlight spot or like the must see tourist attraction. But I like going to where the actual people live and where the natives go, because that's the true, real authenticity of some place. And that's where you see the real culture, the real knit and grit. And I pull inspiration from that. And yeah, I just like to go places, listen to different music. And those are the ways I pull inspiration. What is the biggest surprise in studio ownership? So if you don't know, I own my own photography studio here in Orange County, California. And I've had it almost almost a year now, which is kind of crazy to think about. Almost a year. Is this There we go. Um, but yeah, I've had my studio for almost a year now, which is mind boggling to even think about. But the, the biggest surprise I'll say in studio ownership is, I'll say it, it was more of an internal thing with me. Like I knew that I was a patient person, but owning your own studio where you have to deal with different types of personalities on the daily really showed me how <laughs> patient I really am. Um, and I think that just comes from the fact that I do work with high end clientele sometimes in my photography and my filmmaking. So I just know how to approach situations. I know how to talk to people. My demeanor for the most part is very calm and collected and chill and very just like lax. And a lot of people say, oh, like you're, you're so chill, you're so calm. And I feel like you have to be that way, especially when you own your own business especially a business where you're interacting with people all the time. So I would say that's probably like the biggest surprise was it was more of an internal thing. I, I realized how calm I am. What are the key elements of a successful shoot? So I would say some of the key elements of a successful shoot. One is your client happy. Honestly, I think that's the biggest and only thing that truly matters. Um, if you're creating for someone else that is. So if you're creating for someone else, if the client is happy, nothing else matters. I don't care. Like, will I put in my portfolio? Maybe, maybe not. Is the client, is the person that's paying you happy? I think that's the end all be all of a successful shoot. If the client is happy, then boom, you did your job. How can technology improve the quality and efficiency of shoots today? People always say, oh, gear doesn't matter, gear doesn't matter. But the thing is, gear does matter. It just people get so hyped up on the new camera, the new lens, the new monitor, the new mic, whatever. But the type of work that they do doesn't actually need that type of gear. So yes, gear matters, but it's like, what are you shooting? So like technology, you have to use the technology and use the gear to your advantage. So, I mean, the question was, how does technology improve the quality and efficiency? Well, I just think you just have to have the right gear. I mean, 
you can get great quality photos and footage out of your iPhone these days. But I feel like people are so gear uh, uh, happy and gear, what's the word, hungry that they go and buy that new Sony or that new Canon, whatever the case, whatever the piece of gear is. But use the technology to your advantage, but just use the right technology. Don't just get stuff just to get it. Like I still use my Blackmagic Pocket 4K for all my professional client work. The 4K, the, the first one, I still haven't gotten the 6K or the 6K Pro, even though I want the 6K, but the 4K has done me justice. It still does me justice still in 2024. So use the technology to your advantage, but make sure it's the right gear for you. Do you have ethical considerations before you take on a photo shoot or a video shoot? So this kind of goes back to my other, the other question where I was talking about how back in like 2015, 2014, 2016, I was shooting the type of photography that necessarily didn't resonate with me. Now that I am more established and more mature in my craft, but also as being a man, um, I don't take on anything that I don't necessarily feel comfortable with. I've had many opportunities to shoot, direct, and edit some things that I will not discuss on this channel, but, and the, the pay was handsome for sure. Um, but my values and my ethics trump over everything. I don't care. The money could be amazing, but if I can't sleep at night, what's the point? If it goes against my beliefs, my religion, then it it's it honestly holds no merit in my life. So I definitely have ethics and I'll say no to a job if it does not align. Money does not move me. How do you balance artistic vision with client expectations? I think that's a really good one. So a lot of my clients, it's more of a collaborative approach. So when I do my music videos, most of, most of the clients that I have are really close friends of mine and I've created for them in the past. So um, they'll come to me with an idea and I'll elevate that idea and we'll shoot. Some people that are new to working with me, they kind of already have an idea. I'll take it and I'll kind of remanage it and elevate it and we'll go a little back and forth on the vision and we'll end up on an end result. Sometimes I'll come, they already have a vision, they want it this specific way, and at the end of the day, it's what the client wants. If they're paying for it, then you make what they ask for. You don't necessarily go too far left, you don't go too far right. What I like to do, I like to adhere to what they're asking, what they want, and while we're on the shoot, I may sprinkle in a little sauce and usually the reaction's like, oh, that, that that's sick, like I love that. And I just, I just think it's always good to kind of uh, just appeal to the client and just kind of be a yes man in the beginning. But on the day, have fun. Like they obviously like your work for a reason. If your reel is there, if your portfolio is there, they obviously hired you for a reason. So go ahead and just do what you do best and I'm pretty sure they'll love what, what sauce you throw on there. That sun is coming in kind of crazy right now. Let me kill that. All right, here we go. We're good, we're good. All right, next up, what's been your favorite job? Ah, that's so hard to answer. I've had so many different jobs over my career. Um, what's been my favorite? Jeez, I don't know. I, I honestly, I couldn't answer. I'll just give one, one example. Uh, I was a set photographer for a Chris Brown music video back in the day for the song called New Flame. So it was Chris Brown featuring Usher and Rick Ross. And that was probably one of the longest music video days. It was a 24 hour shoot day. That day was crazy. But I think it was one of my favorites because the song is an iconic song. It was one of Chris Brown's first songs back after uh, like a little hiatus that he was on and those photos i actually still see them circle around the internet today which is kind of crazy so I'll, I'll say that that's probably my favorite my favorite job that i've done what's been your greatest accomplishment i feel like i, I mean for me I, I continue to strive to updo some of my accomplishments but hands down i would say well I, there's kind of two because they're kind of like on the same caliber uh, having my work play in Times Square was one. I had a music video play in Times Square. 
um, during 2020, ironically. <laughs> but uh, I flew there to go see it. It was awesome. And then my second greatest accomplishment, it would have to be having my work play for the Olympics. I had a music video that I shot and it was used to help promote some of the races during the Winter Olympic Games in 2018. I believe it was 2018. Um, and it actually played at the Olympics. So I think those two are probably my greatest accomplishments. And um, I actually use those to help me. Le I, I use that as leverage in some of my other biddings. And uh, obviously I have that on my portfolio and in my bio and about me. And it's always like a talking point. So those two, I think, are as far as the caliber of what they are, are probably like my greatest accomplishments. How do you start building clientele and how do you determine pricing? So I actually just put out a video a few weeks ago about this concept, about pricing and how do you get your clients and all that. So the way you start, well, the way I started getting clients was through social media. I would cold DM, whether it was a model, a business, a brand, whatever, and just try to shoot content. A lot of my clientele also comes from word of mouth from other people. So I work primarily, like not primarily, but a lot of my work comes from the entertainment world. So whether it's in music videos or like uh, doing photo shoots for different artists, um, also in the Christian space. So I do content creation and music videos and things of that nature for churches. So a lot of my, a lot of my references come from someone that I've met along the line in this long journey, this long career, and someone tells someone something, and that's how a lot of my clients come. Now, as far as pricing goes, like I said, I put out a whole video talking about this. The way I've kind of structured my pricing is each year, I raise my prices according to whatever value I can add to said services. So I, I tend, I tend to raise my prices every year in the photo space, in the video space, but also you have to not be afraid to know your worth and know your value. Like obviously people are going to say, oh, I can pay you this amount. Is it worth it to you? If it is cool, take it. If it's not, then don't. You have to know your boundaries. You have to get out of your own, your own self's way in order to even set your pricing. I know so many people, I mean, I was the same way coming up. Um, money was the last thing I wanted to talk about. I was charging $500 for photo shoots for so long until I was like, one, I'm doing the photo shoot. Second, I'm editing and retouching like 50, 60 plus photos, uh, doing revisions to these photos and I'm charging 500 bucks. I'm like, you know what? No. And I'm tethering on the shoot. So like, it's like, I have my, you have all this stuff you have to pay for, but like, you're not charging anything. Once you up your price and you provide a different type of value, your clientele will also change within that. So the clientele that I had in the beginning of my career is very different from the clientele that I have now. Like I'll say I probably shoot maybe three times a month and I'm able to afford everything that I have. And obviously I have like smaller jobs that I do like for my church and, and for smaller brands and whatnot. But big shoots, I probably shoot two or three times. So knowing your value and knowing your worth, that's how you can scale your business and scale your pricing. Do you have contracts for all of the type of jobs you do? If so, who created said contracts? So I actually do have contracts. I have uh, release forms, SOLs, SOLs, <laughs> that's not the right one. SOW, scope of work forms. <laughs> Why did I say SOL? Oh my God. Uh, but yes, I have contracts. I have all those forms. Um, I actually got them from, yeah, I'm sure you guys know of Jacob Owens and his company, Tropic Color. He has a whole contracts bundle on his website. And I've been using that for years and it's kept, it saved me. It's, it's got me more money and, and it saved me money. So I'll have it linked down below, but they have a whole package of contracts, forms, documents for all that type of stuff. And I've gone through, edited it out, uh, things that necessarily didn't pertain to me, but um, added things that did. And those contracts have saved me money and they also made me money because I had certain things in those contracts uh, that if a client does not agree to or not abide by, um, 
basically they had to pay a fee and all that stuff's in the contract and once it's signed by both parties then you're gucci so contracts yes you need to have contracts but i'll have the ones that i use linked down below what are the most effective ways to market your photography i'd say this obviously instagram is like the quickest and easiest um way to market hands down it's the easiest it's free it's it's there it's on your phone TikTok, social media youtube cool um i'm still a little old school you know i still have my website and i feel like every photographer and cinematographer filmmaker director you need to have a website because some of these big brands yeah they have instagrams but they're not necessarily going to go on your instagram all the time they they want to see a reel they want to see a portfolio they want to see like a tangible uh I guess curated's the word. I don't know if that's the right word, but just a platform that is that will filter out all the all the junk and just the work that you want to present to them. And I even recommend, I mean, I don't necessarily do this, but I know that some people that are photographers and directors and and filmmakers and they have three different websites. So if you are approached by a brand that's seeking photography for food, but you're also a music video director, you don't wanna send them your music video portfolio. What you'll do is curate a portfolio for that said brand around the type of thing that they're looking for and send that over to them. So then that way they say, oh, okay, cool. This person gets exactly the type of style that we do, blah, 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 blah. Um, so yeah, I would say webs having a website is still king. Um, and if you have the right SEO optimized, then you can be found by God knows who. So having a website, I still think it's hands down the best way to go. What are the benefits of pursuing formal education? Okay, so this is an interesting one because I get this question a lot, believe it or not. Um, so I'm classically trained. I have a bachelor's degree in film. Went to film school, did the whole thing, cool. Now the benefits, I would say, really only lasted for a few years because this whole content creation, becoming a filmmaker, becoming a photographer thing is drastically different from when I was a teenager. So when I, I went to school in 2009, 2009, that's when I graduated from high school. So there was no such thing as, oh, let's go to YouTube and learn. Oh, let's go to the internet and find a course. No, college was the way to go. Um, would I recommend college now? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I have a whole degree that I paid $75,000 for. Not one person, not one brand, not one job. No one has ever asked me for my degree or if I'm classically trained, if I went to school, nothing. I would say you do not need to go to school for this. You do not need a degree to be a director or photographer. Um, it was just how it was when I was coming up. It was like school was the only way to learn. Um, but now you can find all the same information for free or a fraction of the cost on the internet. And I'd say use that. So yes, there's a benefit if you were, you know, in 2009, 2005. Right now, I'd say stand clear of film school and photography school learn it all online hey james new follower here what's up do you have any tripod recommendations and do you flip your camera vertically for ig content okay so i have a few different tripods actually one second i might as well just go ahead and show you guys all the tripods i have so this is my manfrotto i think it's like a 400 something i don't know the name I don't know the name, but I'll put it in the description. But this is my fluid head. Oh, is it right? It's not, no. So this is my fluid head tripod. I use this for all of my professional gigs. I throw my black magic rig on this. And this is like my professional, like heavy duty workhorse tripod. So my big cameras with my matte boxes and filters, the whole rigging system goes on this. Second, I have this small rig tripod. The thing that you want for these like smaller like travel tripods, make sure you have a ball head so that way you can 
uh, put it vertically if you want. So sometimes to answer your second question, um, sometimes I'll just tilt the ball head this way to mount vertically. Um, but then other times I also have a cage on my cameras and I'll mount it vertically like that. Um, so yeah, I have this one, you know, it has all the steps so you can make it bigger, make it longer, make it really high. And then the third one, that I'm using is actually recording this video right now and it's the newer version. I'll put it down in the description. It's kind of the same thing as this last tripod, but the one thing about this one, you can tilt it to do top downs, which I think is a huge benefit because I can get those beautiful shots while looking flat on a table or over something. Um, I love that one a lot. It's kind of expensive, but I love it. And then, Oh, it's right here. The last tripod I have is this Mantis pod. I absolutely love this thing. So this, this is kind of what I use when I like do vlogging or if I want to put it in uh, obscure different areas. So it opens up like this. This opens up like that. Cool. And then it also has like this little, I forget what they actually call it, but like this little piece right here. <laughs> They have that little section right there. So if you want to hang it onto things, you can hang it. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love this thing. Like I said, I use it more for vlogging when I travel and things of that nature. So those are the tripods that I use and I'll have them all linked down in the description. How do you deal with criticism and rejection in your work? So early days, I would take it to heart. I would get really upset. I would get really sad. I'm like, dang, like they don't like it. Oh. Um, obviously if it's coming from the right person, then you should take the right action. Now in today's society, everyone has an opinion and you just have to learn to not care what people say, no matter how fire something is, there will always be that one comment. Uh, there's this one guy that I follow, uh, what's his name? Hold on. I have to find out what his name is. Hold on. Daniel Schiffer. That's, that's his name. So he posted a video on TikTok that I saw probably like a month or two ago, but he was saying how he always puts one thing wrong in all of his videos just because he knows people will find that one thing and blow it up and make com and make comments about it. And low key, it drives engagement, but everything else about the piece of content is perfect, but he throws it in there just because he knows people are gonna, you know, run with it. So it's, it's interesting that like, you just, you just have to learn how to have tough skin. I'm telling you, I've been, I've been doing this for a long time. And if you worry about what every single person has to say, bro, you will never, you'll never move forward. You'll just be so consumed by other people's opinion. Now, if you make something, now, if you make something and it's for a client and they have notes, that's different. But if people are just being critical, just to be critical, bro, just literally that's it just tell them to move on step on the internet will always be the internet everyone will always have something to say how does editing enhance your work so editing i honestly feel like is one of the most important pieces of the puzzle you can have a terrible shoot day but an editor can save that shoot day and make you look like money um but i would say obviously having a good production is always best to have a good post-production. And I think that's one of my superpowers is before I was ever like a videographer, director, I was an editor. I always sat behind the computer and edited people's footage. Once I transitioned over to shooting and filming, editing was always in my head. So I'm accustomed to always shoot for the edit. Obviously I know about coverage and having uh, more options for the edit, but while I'm shooting, like if it's a music video or a, or a commercial, I'm literally seeing the edit play as I'm shooting. So I know, oh, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that shot. So for all you videographers and cinematographers um, and up and coming directors that also edit their own footage, think of the edit. Always think of the edit. Don't just aimlessly shoot. Think of the sequence think, oh, I'm going to do this into this shot. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. It's a lifesaver. So editing 
is a key portion, but editing also uh, technically starts during production. How much did you invest in your studio? If it's not a secret, <laughs> uh, it's not really a secret, but so my studio, I initially invested around $18,000 into that studio. Um, so that was for all the licensing, that was for all the gear, furniture, props, uh, first and last month's rent, security deposit, uh, I'm trying to think of what else, paint, backdrops. Yeah, so 18,000 to get that thing running and probably the best 18 grand I've ever spent. And lastly, what advice would you give to aspiring photographers and filmmakers? The one piece of advice I would say is be true to you. There's so much on the internet, there's so much on social media. You just have to be authentically you. I mean, this is something that I, I still struggle with, even with like this whole YouTube thing and like creating content because I do so many different things. I don't know necessarily where to put my attention for creation. But the thing is, I don't think I actually need to niche, niche down because, you know, I am a director, I'm a photographer, I'm a, a filmmaker, and I'm an entrepreneur. It's like, it's a rarity. There's not many people that do all of those things. Not saying I'm the only person that does it, but there are people that want to do those things. So I think honing in on the fact that I am those things and presenting that is being truly who I am. And I feel like I will be doing a disservice if I don't necessarily uh, bring forth that type of knowledge, that type of content, because there are people that, that want that and they seek that out. So being you, being your authentic self and being true to you is the one piece of advice I will give 10 times over to anyone getting started in this game, for sure. Don't lean in to the trends, even though trends are fun for a moment, but do you, do you be you always. And that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed that quick, I don't know how quick it was, but I hope you guys enjoyed that Q&A. Make sure you guys follow me over on Instagram if you don't do so already. The Instagram is by James Davis. It's also linked down below. And if you guys like this type of content, let me know what you guys want to see next. Drop it down in the comments down below. Uh, I'm going to go out, take my little Fuji, take some photos, and uh, hope you guys have a good one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.